Hello, and welcome to the 126th episode of Movie and TV Talk. On this episode, I am going to be talking about the latest Star Wars crap from Disney Plus, The Acolyte. Remember, there will be spoilers, so let's get into it. Before I watched this show, I had already heard the majority of the reasons why people didn't like it. And I was disappointed in what I heard because pretty much all the reasons were related to the to a lot of the cast being in the LGBTQ community. And well, being in that myself, I am heavily disappointed in that uh, being most of people's reasons and not for anything about the show itself. Now, that I have seen all of the show myself, I am even more disappointed because the cast being LGBTQ doesn't actually matter to the characters they're playing. Now, what is this show even about? I feel like that is something that the show itself doesn't really know the answer to. We get introduced to the character of Osha because she gets blamed for the murder of a Jedi who gets killed right at the beginning of episode one. Episode 1 pretty much opens very similar to episode 1 of The Mandalorian, where there's a fight in a bar-type establishment. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it is just a pattern that I've noticed, even though this is the first Star Wars show that I've seen since the second season of The Mandalorian. Now, Osha is certain that she didn't do it because she was at her job at the time the murder happened. But of course, the bar owner comes in and is like, nope, that that was the one. So she has to go with the Jedi back to Coruscant for questioning. We eventually meet a Jedi named Sol, who is a very important character for the show. Now there is a lot of backstory stuff for Osha that happens over several episodes and kind of keeps getting brought up in like every episode. (laughs) See, Osha has a sister named Mei and they were children in a coven of witches on a mostly uninhabited planet. And they were preparing the children for an ascension ceremony. The Jedi come in and want to test the kids for potential Padawans. The important thing is that Osha doesn't want to do the ascension thing and wants to be a Jedi. Whereas Mei wants to do the ascension thing. Because that's what she's been taught her entire life, basically. Now, when the two get back, Osha is determined to leave with the Jedi. But Mei doesn't want her to. So Mei ends up setting a fire. Long story short, Osha thinks Mei dies from the fire. However, that ends up being false. This is because the person that actually killed the Jedi at the beginning of episode 1 was actually Mei. And eventually Osha and so learned that she's still alive and are determined to kill... Well, she's determined to kill the four Jedi that were on her whole plan, home planet of Brednock. I'll be honest, I felt like nothing really happens until the fifth episode of this show. Nothing exciting. Episode 5 is when main villain, Quimmer, makes a full appearance and engages in a fight with multiple Jedi. I will say the fights in this show are really well done, which is more than I can say for the writing. From here, Osha ends up going to Unknown Planet with Quimmer, and Mei ends up with Sol. Eventually, Sol decides that he and Mei are going back to Brednock, and Osha ends up knowing this when she puts on Quimmer's really cool-looking sensory deprivation helmet. They also decide to go after Mei and Sol. Everyone meets on Brednock, and uh, Quimmer and Sol fight. Sol gets the upper hand, but Mei comes up and helps. But this is where the big thing happens. See, when the Jedi were on Brednock, this so many years ago when Mei and Osha were children, there's this moment where the Jedi are trying to get the children off planet, and the witches basically are like, oh no, we're under attack, and their mom like turns weirdly smoky, and without hesitating, Sol just stabs her with his lightsaber. So, in this moment where Mei has the opportunity to kill Sol, Sol pretty much says that he kills their mom, and Osha hears this, asks if it's true, Sol confirms it's true, and Mei is, er, blah. Osha is filled with so much rage that she chokes Sol to death, and in doing so, 
while holding his lightsaber, the crystal turns red. Um, which I've never seen that happen in any Star Wars media ever. I thought red crystals were just found, but okay. After that, Osha decides to go and train with Quimmer, and he erases May's memory. I might have that backwards. I th Actually, I think May ends up going with Quimmer, and Osha gets left behind and memory erased. Uh, but that's pretty much the show, in a nutshell, the important stuff anyway. So why do I say that this show doesn't know what it wants to be about? I get the sense that this show wanted to say something very profound about the Jedi, but it doesn't do that. Now, it certainly doesn't show the Jedi in the best light at all. They lied to Osha about what happened to her and her sister. They were going to lie about Sol's actions, but, you know, he died anyway. Um, and that, I feel like, is something the show was aiming for. And that's because they show the Jedi to just be kind of stupid and unaware all the time. At the end of the show, Master Andara mentions finding a former pupil of hers, assuming he hasn't you know, become super duper evil, which is Quimmer. So my question is, did Indara know about him and his actions all throughout the show and chose to ignore it? Also, several of the Jedi say that Osha and Mei are not sisters, but two of the same person born of something called virgins. And that is something only extremely powerful force users could do. Now, the audience has told this a lot. And the show just doesn't do anything with it. They throw virgins around all the time and they keep telling the audience about, you know, how powerful one has to be to make something like this happen. But they don't show it to the audience, nor do they really do anything with it outside of this. The other thing is that while Quimmer says he is Sith, he doesn't really come across as, like, this super evil guy in the way that, say, Darth Vader or Kylo Ren do. Yeah, he's killed his share of Jedi, but the show really shows him as someone who just wants to be left alone to teach a Padawan the way that of the Force that he knows, basically. Yeah, he's got a cool red lightsaber, and like I said, he's killed some Jedi, but like, he doesn't choke anybody, he doesn't lightning anybody. He just doesn't feel like a massive threat in the way that, you know, someone like Vader or Kylo Ren has. And it it doesn't help the fact that he's kind of not in the show all that much. He doesn't have a major part till episode 5. And then he and Osha spend a bunch of time chatting on Unknown Planet, and then they go after May, and there's another fight scene. And it's like, that's it. That's all of our big villain guy. I honestly think that they spent way too much time on what happens in the past with Osha, May, and those four Jedi on Brednock. How come we never get a confrontation between Endara and Quimmer? He is her former Padawan. That would have been a very interesting dynamic to see and throw into the mix, but they don't do it. I hate to say it, but while the show has cool fights, the show is a show that isn't really about anything because they spend too much time on backstory that just takes up too much episodes. They could have made a statement about the Jedi, and they tried. But they also tried to do just too much backstory stuff and missed the mark on saying something about the Jedi. There's like one senator guy who ironically was played, I don't know the actor's name, but it was the guy who plays uh, Martian Manhunter in Supergirl and, you know, the other Arrowverse stuff. Um, he um, 
basically is like, oh, we need to make an internal review about the Jedi and says some stuff about them being, you know, a religious organization and blah, blah, blah. But they don't do anything with that. Like, he just says stuff and that's it. Was at the end of the show, they also tease us with Yoda, so, you know, there goes keeping this show more of a standalone story, which is exactly what happened with The Mandalorian. The Acolyte isn't a good or a bad show, but it's just kind of a nothing show, and that, to me, is far worse than being a bad show. But, that's all I have to say, so if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for listening, and goodbye.